Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we'll discuss apparent power and power factor. And we'll also discuss example 11.9 and we'll solve practice problem 11.9. So first of all, uh, let's discuss apparent power with the help of this diagram. You can see there is a power supply, 120 volts, 60 hertz. And we have a resistance and inductance in series. So this is called inductive load or inductive circuit. Now the related power to these three elements will be as shown here. The power across the resistor or the resistive power is called the real power. And this is unit is in watt. And in the diagram, this is called power triangle diagram. The real power is shown in the real axis. Then the power consumed by the inductor is called reactive power and its unit is VAR, volt ampere reactive. And it is shown on the imaginary axis. And the sum of the two, that is the power supplied, has two names. One, it is called complex power. And the complex power is with the magnitude and angle. And if you just take the magnitude, it is simply called apparent power. And the unit in both cases is volt ampere, VA. Okay, we'll be using uh, these formulas. We have already discussed this, discussed this. The only difference between the two here, the angle is theta V minus theta I. That is the angle of the voltage minus angle of the current. Sometimes this is simply called theta. Now the complex power, as we said, complex power here is the combination of P and Q. It is written as P plus JQ. Another way of writing complex power is in terms of voltage RMS, current RMS, and angle theta V minus theta I. And the apparent power, as we said, without angle, complex power without angle, that means just the magnitude. So the magnitude can be calculated like this also, or we can simply write V RMS magnitude, I RMS magnitude. The real power, we said, is the real axis. So real of S, that means the S cosine of theta. We know the uh, real axis is cosine of theta. So we write it as cosine of theta V minus theta 1. The imaginary axis is the reactive power and it is written as S sine theta V minus theta 1. A new term here is the power factor. Power factor is simply cosine of the angle. So cosine of theta V minus theta 1 or you can say cosine of angle theta. Now with this background, Let's solve the question 11.9. A series connected load, so this is a load, and it is series connected means it would have resistance and inductance or resistance and capacitance. The current in the circuit is this, and the applied voltage is given here. We have to find the apparent power and the power factor of the load. Also, we have to determine the element's value. That means what is the value of the resistance, what is the value of the capacitance, and what is the value of the inductance if it is there. So first of all, for ease, we we'll write these time domain values into the phasor domain. And you know in phasor, we just write the magnitude and angle. So magnitude and this angle. Similarly here, the magnitude 4 and this angle. And now the apparent power formula will use this VRMS, IRMS. So how much is VRMS? We know VRMS is V maximum divided by under root 2. In our case, V maximum is 120 divided by under root 2. And similarly, IRMS is I maximum divided by under root 2. I maximum is 4, so 4 divided by under root 2. Okay, now we'll find the apparent power. Simple multiplication of the two values that we had calculated. So the apparent power is 240 VA. 
next part is to find the power factor you know the power factor is given by cosine of the angle theta v minus theta i if you plot the phasor values it will be something like this this is v angle with minus 120 and the current with angle plus 110 now couple of things from here you can find number one theta v minus theta i you can calculate number two you can see that the current is leading here so we'll use these two conclusions first of all the angle theta v is minus 20 minus 10 and so if you calculate cosine of minus 30 it will be 0 0.866 now with all power factor we have to write whether it is leading or lagging now a couple of ways to find out if the current is leading then the power factor will be leading very simple and you can see here current is leading and therefore we can straight away say that the power factor is leading another way to conclude is that we can say that the power factor is leading because the current leads the voltage and this is in case of a capacitor actually so the capacitor current leads voltage some people have found a simple way to re remember this they use term civil first three cib that means in capacitor current leads the voltage and in case of an inductor current lags the voltage so in our case it is leading so therefore it is capacitor and in case of a capacitor we can say that the current leads but simple from here is the easier since current is leading therefore we will write that the power factor is also leading okay now we have to find the elemental value what is inside this we have already learned that this is a capacitive circuit that means there is a resistance and capacitance with it but let's see how we can calculate that we can calculate z from here putting in the values so this is the magnitude and angle of z and if we convert this from polar to rectangular we can easily see two terms one is the real term and the other is the imaginary term and we know that in series combination it could be either inductor or capacitor if there is a positive sign it will be inductor if there is a negative sign it will be capacitor so in, in our case there is a negative sign therefore this is capacitor and we can just equate and the first is the r and the second is uh, j1 over omega c there it is j15 both minus sign so minus and j cancel that means 15 is equal to 1 over omega c so this is one way the other way is also we know that it is capacitor is that the power factor was leading but anyway we will now equate these two okay capacitive circuit so we drew this this value we can draw it here so resistance and this is the capacitive reactance we still need to find the value of the capacitance so equating as I mentioned if you compare these two minus j minus j cancel 15 is equal to 1 over omega c so 1 over omega c is equal to 15 and from here c is 1 over 15 into omega omega we know is 2 pi f f is 50 putting the value capacitance is 212.2 microfarad so this is the first question or question 11.9 example 11.9 now let's solve the practice problem 11.9 here we have to find the power factor and apparent power load is given z and the applied voltage is given so power factor for that we need to find the angle this angle theta or theta v minus theta i this can also be calculated from here if we convert this into polar form this is the rectangular form 
Converting into polar form, we get the magnitude and the angle. This can be written as cos theta, and theta can be found from here into polar form. This is the magnitude and this is the angle. So theta is 33.69, and therefore power factor is cosine of 33.69 is equal to 0 0.832. Here again the same question, is it leading or lagging? If you simply compare with this, we know that Z has a positive sign here and positive sign means it is a inductive circuit and in inductor the current lags. So the current lags, that means the power factor lags. And from here you can see current lags the voltage in inductor. So our power factor will be lagging. Now the apparent power, we know the formula VRMS, IRMS. We don't have I, so we'll have to calculate I first of all. We have V in phasor form. And sometimes students get confused. How do we write this bold V? Don't have to really. A simple V, if you put bar, this represents phases. And in our case, it is the magnitude at angle, magnitude 320 and angle is plus 10. So current is in phasor V over Z. Putting the value of V and Z, solving, we get the current to be 4.438 angle minus 23.69. So voltage and current both found. We'll use this formula. I prefer to use simply this. No need of going into the phasor formula. V RMS is V magnitude over under root 2. I RMS is I, I maximum, sorry. I maximum over under root 2. V maximum is this one. I maximum is this one. So V RMS, V maximum 320 over 20. I RMS, I maximum over under root 2. And multiplying the two, we get the answer, 710 volt ampere. Now in the book, the answer he has given is 710 angle 33.69. I think this is wrong because in case of an apparent power, you don't write the angle. If you write angle, it will be called complex power. But anyway, the magnitude is same. So I hope you have been able to uh, follow this. Give me your feedback. Thank you.